Welcome to the show, everybody. Hit the intro. Welcome to another week of a Cage My IQ. I'm your host, Cage. Today, I am going to be previewing Bellator 278, which is live from Honolulu, Hawaii, and it is headlined by Juliana Velasquez defend her Women's Flyweight World Championship against Liz Kalmuch. I'm excited for this one. we got 10 fights on this card. This is going to be part one of... Uh, of Honolulu, Hawaii's two uh, two day fight schedule. Uh, there's going to be this fight, which is on Friday, and then of course we got UFC 279, which will be on Saturday, also in Honolulu, Hawaii. Which on that one, it's going to be headlined by another women's uh, fight between between Chris Cyber going up against uh, Arlene Blankow. And then, of course, you got Juan Archuleta going up against Hoppy and Stotts in the, one of the biggest fights in the Grand, Bantamweight Grand Prix with Sergio Pettis uh, bailing out two to an injury that has forced him out six to nine months. But before I get to the uh, preview part of uh, this video, this is Cage of My IQ, the best place for MMA content. Or I ask for you guys to do, if you haven't already done so, and this is your first time coming to the podcast, please hit the subscribe button down below. Also hit the notification bell so whenever anything gets put out, you guys are the first to get it. And please smash the like button down below. That would really help us out. And, of course, hit us up in the comments section and let, you know, let us know what you think of this video and who do you think is going to win on Belter 278. But let's get into the action here. We got a 10 fight card here for Friday. Uh, the first fight on the prelims is a men's matchup between Dante Shero versus Scotty Hay. On this one, it is, of course, a welterweight matchup. Dante Shero comes in at 8 and 3. He is 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Of course, everybody remembers. He took the Logan Storley fight on short notice and did rather well uh, for not getting finished. Uh, he, he fought well, was uh, striking pretty decent against uh, Logan Storley, and was able to uh, take the fight to the distance. He's going up against Scotty Hayo. He is 5-3, and 2-3 and three in his last five fights. He's fighting out of Hawaii, of course. Their gyms are Chosen View Gym and Average Joe's Hawaii Gym. The audience thinks that 95% are going with uh, Dante Shiro, whereas only 5% are going with Scotty Heyo. Looking at the past couple fights, uh, of course, decision, KO, submission, decision, decision, and, and decision, submission, sum, submission, decision, decision. These guys have primarily been decision fighters, and I'm going to lean with the guy with the more experience in the belter. I'm going to go Dante Scherer by decision. I feel like he's going to be able to grapple and strike with the Scotty. I think he showed in the Logan Story fight that he has a, a nice grasp of uh, transitioning from grappling to striking. I think this is going to be, of course, an entry-level fight as it is coming in as one of the first fights on here. I think that t -shirt just does enough to edge out Scotty in this fight, and he pulls out a, a two-to-one unanimous decision victory over the Hawaiian uh, fighter, Scotty. So I'm going with Dante Shero by unanimous decision in this matchup. Moving on to the second fight on the prelims, we got Makoa Cooper versus Blake uh, Perry. Makoa Cooper comes in at one and new. In his uh, pro uh, career, whereas his opponent, Blake Perry, is making his debut as a pro, but he's 4-1 um, and in his last five fights as an amateur, whereas Koa Cooper is 3-0. and uh, They train out Lion of Judah Gym, and then Perry is unaffiliated as of right now. The 
The audience thinks that it's going to be 87% going towards Cooper, whereas 13% are leaning towards Perry. And, of course, you know, Cooper, he has beaten in his career. He is won by KO, KO, and KO, whereas Perry, KO, it's a submission, 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 and then one loss to uh, McCoe's brother, Blake, was by a knockout. Uh, of course, uh, Blake Perry has a, a jiu-jitsu background, and then he also has the striking background that he's been working on from time to time, whereas Makoa has a boxing background. He's been incorporating the jiu-jitsu into his uh, game plan. I think this is going to be a first-round knockout by Makoa Cooper. He's going to take the blueprint from Blake in his fight against Perry a few fights ago on the amateur scene. It's just going to overwhelm Perry with the striking, the movement, and he's going to put him away uh, towards the end of the first round. I got McCoe Cooper, first round knockout over Blake Perry. Moving on to the next fight. On the prelims, we got Weber Almeida going up against Fabricio Franco. In this matchup right here, it's being taking place at featherweight. Uh, you got the silverback Weber Almeida, who comes in at five and one. He is four and one in his last five fights. He, he's going up against Fabricio Franco, who's eight and four, four and one in his last five fights as well. They train out X Gym and then MMA Masters, as you know. MMA Masters is where Colby Covington trains. As you like, look right there from the audience, ninety-two percent is back in. Uh, Weber Almeida, mostly by knockout, whereas 8% are back in uh, Fabricio Franco. If you look at the couple of fights that they've done, if you look at Franco, he's won by decision, decision, KO, KO, and then lost by decision in his last fight. Whereas for Almeida, he's won, KO win, KO, KO. And his last fight against Johnny Soto, he lost by decision. I'm going to lean towards the favorite here, Weber Almeida. He's been in the Belter uh, system for the past four fights, which he's 3-1 and one in. And in those wins, he has the three knockouts. He has nice power. He has nice hands. And he can grapple two. Whereas Fabricio Franco, he's making his debut. So we don't know much about him other than, of course, his Striking is ever improving, and he has good jiu-jitsu. I'm going to lean towards Weber Almeida in this one. I'm going to go second-round knockout here. I think Fabricio does enough to get through the first round. I think he makes it competitive. But in the second round, he gets caught by a overhand shot from Almeida. He puts him down, and he gets the second-round knockout. So in this one, I got Weber, the silverback Almeida, by second-round knockout. Moving on to the next fight on the prelims. We're moving on through pretty quickly. We got Eric Perez going up against CJ Hamilton. These two have a lot of fights under their belt. This is going to be taking place at Bantamweight. First, you got Eric Goito Perez. He's 20 and 8, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Whereas CJ Hamilton, the Autobot, Comes in at 15 and 9, 2 and 3 in his last five fights. They train out Jackson Wink MMA and then Contemporary Martial Arts Gym. You got the consensus thinking that Perez is 93% going to win, whereas only 7% are back in CJ Hamilton. If you look at the their past fights, Blaine shut by decision. He lost to Josh Hill by decision. Toby Meshek. By KO, ground and pound. He beat Andres Uriah by submission and then won by KO. Whereas CJ lost to Matthias Matos by KO. Magomed Magomedov by submission. He won uh, by split decision. He won by su submission. And then he lost by submission. I think it's going to be Eric Perez by... Uh, Second round sub via Randy can choke. I feel like both of these guys have good hands, but good movement. But I think the difference is going to be I think Perez is a little bit better 
when it comes to towards the grapple. And uh, I think he has the edge there. Uh, CJ Hamilton is more of the boxing striker who's tried to incorporate the jiu-jitsu into his uh, game plan, whereas Perez has had the jiu-jitsu and has worked with his striking. And it's been a, a better use of late for him, of course. He is 3-2. He has the edge in this one. I think he tires out Hamilton. He avoids all those big shots from Hamilton. I think Hamilton's going to do better in the striking, but I think he's going to get overwhelmed by the grappling of Perez. Perez is going to get him down, and in the second round, he's going to lock in the rain naked choke when Hamilton's trying to get up. So in this one, I got on uh, for a, a second round submission by rear naked choke. Let's move on to the next fight. On the prelims here, we got the next fight, which is fight five. This is Zach Seen uh, going up against Tafik Musayev uh, right now on here. We got the lightweight matchup. Zach Seen's coming in. God's Warrior, 15 11, 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Uh, there is, we got Tafik Musayev, who was 18 and 4, 4 and 1 in his last five fights. And then they fight out Black House MMA and an Orion Fight Club. Fight Club. Uh, Jim, sorry about that. Um, the it, the people think that it's going to be 95% uh, going towards Musaya, whereas 5% are lean towards Zane. In this matchup, I'm going to lean towards the better fighter, which is Musaya. I feel like he has better hands. I feel like Zach Zane's just coming to his own. If you know Zach Zane, you have that video out there that showed that he won the fight. In uh, five seconds in one of his last fights. But of late, he's lost by KO. He's lost by submission, guillotine. He won by the KO decision and then lost by submission. So whereas Musayev lost by submission, won by decision over a Patriki Pitbull. So that's a huge matchup in Ryzen, uh, and considering that he's the lightweight champion now. he got KO. You got KO, and then you got Decision. I'm going with Tafik Musayev by first-round KO here. I think it's a big thing that he was able to get that victory over the champion right now at Pitbull. I think it's going to carry a lot of weight here. He's had a lot of experience in Ryzen, which is a big uh, company. He did well in that Grand Prix. And uh, Zach Singh is just coming in, of course, making his uh, – Debut after losing in LFA and EO FC. He's going to need to get a win in to get me more confidence into picking him. He has a really good jiu-jitsu and ever-expanding uh, striking, but I don't think he's on the level of Musayev, who can use the grapple and to take him down as the big-time punches. And that's why I'm going with Tafik Musayev by first-round knockout. Let's move on. To the main card, we got Manny Moreau going up against Nate Andrews. Uh, this is a, a rematch from the regional scene. These two are fighting at catch weight right here. Uh, you got Manny the Dragon Moreau, who's coming in at 12 and 7, 3 and 2 in his last five fights, whereas Nate Andrews the Snake is coming in 16 and 4, 2 and 3 in his last five fights. They train out of American Elite MMA. And then Triforce MMA, Gym, and New England's Combat. Where you look at it right here, 85% are back in Andrews. There's only 15 are back in Moru. I think the big thing with this is, is Moru was beaten in the first matchup by some. And I'm going to lean towards that way again. He is pretty good at uh, each uh, uh, tra training thing that he uh, that is out. He's good at striking. He's good at jujitsu. He's good at defense, but he's not great at anything. And I feel like Nate Andrews is really good at jiu-jitsu and takedowns. And if you look right here, Gatine win. He lost being Amos. 
lost by unanimous. I uh, won by unanimous. Then he lost by decision in KO uh, against a very good side of one. Whereas uh, Manny Moro lost by submission, won by submission, decision, decision, and then <coughs> KO. I think Nate Andrews is going to uh, get back in the win column here after losing to a tough opponent in Sadawan. He's going to be able to take down Moro and lock in that that guillotine uh, choke again. I, I think it's uh, Moro has had trouble with certain guys when it comes to uh, grappling, and it, it was showed last fight, of course, against uh, Usman or Namagamadov. He was able to just manhandle Moro against the cage. Moro is more better at the stand-up where he can get his striking going and rack up the volume and get those combinations going. But I think Nate Andrews is going to get in close, push up against the cage, and try and get the fight down and look to, to lock in one of their submissions again on him. It's going to be a repeat of last fight. And this one, I got second round uh, submission by uh, Nate Andrews over Manny Moro. Moving on to the next fight on the card, fight seven. This is the the right now the second fight on the main card. We got Christian Edwards, a protege of John Jones, going up against Grant Neal. Uh, this is going to be a very entertaining fight. It's going to be a height light heavyweight. Christian Payne Edwards is five and one. Four and one in his last five fights, whereas a uh, Grant the Truth uh, Neil comes in at six and one, four and one in his last five fights. So they're both coming in on a loss. They train out of you know, Jackson Wink and Genesis Training Academy. the The crowd thinks that eighty percent are going with Neil, whereas only twenty percent is going with Edwards. Edwards had that back in on him. He had that. Uh, uh, back in as being one of the next uh, 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 good fighters in Belter. Uh, thought they had one, but then he came in last fight and got knocked out by Ben Parrish in the first round. He has beaten a one by decision, submission, decision, and KO. So he had he can he has a better overall background, whereas his opponent Neil lost to Pleasy by split decision, where he won by sub. Sub, decision, and then KO here. He's going to have more of the wrestling jiu-jitsu background, whereas Christian Edwards is more of the stand-up, uh, striking, uh, and jiu-jitsu, and Muay Thai on his side. I'm going to lean with the, the wrestler here and Grant Neal. I think that he gets the win by Unanimous decision. I think he just uses uh, getting Christian Edwards to the ground, minimizing the the stand up game here. I think he's able to do that. He's going to challenge for subs at uh, certain points in the fight. I don't think he gets them. I think Christian Edwards will have one or two uh, t- uh, chances in the stand up to where he can try and uh, damage uh, Neil, but Neil will uh, recover or not get hit as bad. And that's why I'm leaning towards Grant Near here. I think the control time and the, the ground and pound are going to favor him in this matchup. So that's why I'm going Grant Neal by a unanimous decision over Christian Edwards. Move on to fight eight. And we got the first uh, fight for the Bantamweight Grand Prix. We got one of my favorite matchups of the weekend. We got... Uh, Jornel Lugo versus Danny Sabatello. In this matchup uh, here at Bantamweight, of course, Jornel A1 Lugo comes in at 8 0, 5 0 in his last uh, five fights, undefeated. Whereas Danny, the Italian gangster Sabatello, comes in at 11 1, 5 0 in his last five fights. They train out Combat Club and American Top Team Gym. Uh, the majority of the people think it's going to be 72% Ryan towards Danny Sabatello, whereas only 28% are Ryan with Jornel Lugo. This is a very interesting matchup because you got Sabatello who has a big wrestling background. He he, he fights kind of born fights, but he, he knows how to uh, get the fight to the ground, do a lot of ground and pound, do a lot of movement on the ground, and whereas his opponent, Jornel Lugo, is all about 
movement, the striking. He has really good hands uh, uh, and that have been shown in the background. But then he has the, uh, the jiu-jitsu background where he uses the hands to then get up close. And then when they're in the clinch, he, he usually can take over, get the fight to the ground, and submit his opponents. Uh, he's done in the past, as, as, as you see right here. Uh, he has a submission victory over Keith Lee where he was piecing up Keith Lee, but then the third, he got the renegade choke. And then he's had a couple after that where Sabatello is decision, decision, decisions. He does have that submission. And then he does have another submission there, but he's more so position over uh over he's more control over position he's just trying to keep control on the ground get the ground and pound up and rack up the volume whereas lugo is all about to stand up and then he uses the jiu-jitsu when it needs to be used as a backing tool and in this one i'm going with the with the underdog here i'm going with the undefeated join on lugo i'm gonna go with uh round two knockout here. I think his hands are going to be what is best here. I think he'll be able to stuff the takedowns of Danny Sabatello. He'll get his striking going, get the volume up. It's going to uh, pester and it's going to get to Sabatello. He's going to start making mistakes once the second round comes. And I think that's when Jornel Lugo connects on one of those overhand shots and he puts him down and he locks his spot in the, the Grand Prix. This is a wild card matchup. And I think he's going to put himself on the map here. So I'm going with Jordan Lugo, round two knockout over Danny Sabatello. Moving on to the co-main event of the evening, we got a, another uh, men's Bantamweight Grand Prix wildcard matchup. We got Enrique Barzola versus Nikita Mikhailov. Uh, Barzola. Is coming in at 17, 5, and 2. His nickname is El Fuerte. He is 2, 1, and 2 in his last five fights out of Peru, whereas Nikita Mikhailov is 9 and 1, 5 and 0 in his last five fights out of Russia. They train at AKA and then Alexander Nevsky Gym. The majority of the crowd are going with 59% towards Nikita, whereas only 41 are going towards Barzola. So it's actually a little bit closer than what people think it's going to be, uh, than what others think it's going to be. I think it's close because both have that grab on background that they rely on. Barzola has a wrestling background from high school. He, he uses that, and then he has the jiu-jitsu on the side, and then he's been working with the boxing on uh, helping to find him a little bit more where Nakia has that Sambo background. Of course, he trains with Fader, trains with Modoski, he trains with Namcop, and he has hands. And he can do it with there too, but it's all about the forcing his opponent's back and getting the fight to the ground and using his cardio, as you see right there, KO, decision, 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 decision but in the last one of course he had a KO against in Belter so that's a thing to look at whereas you got his opponent Enrique who lost by decision won by decision lost by decision had majority draw and then had the KO so both are coming off KO wins here in Belter I'm going to lean towards Nikita Mikhailov here a lot of people think that the power of uh, Bozoa it's going to be a factor here, but I think that the just the IQ of Nikita is going to be the the game plan here, uh, and, and w- in which why I think he's going to win by decision here. I think he's going to push Barzola back a lot of the fight. He's going to control the middle of the octagon. And he's going to get that grapple on going the sambo because it's easier to. Uh, get your opponent down when you can move back and get him down. I think he's going to utilize the the body lock uh, leg trip a lot in his fight, and he's going to keep the fight on the ground a lot. And the big thing that he's going to have to deal with here is the movement of Barzola on the ground, being a wrestler. He's going to know to try and defend and try and reverse it. That's the one thing Nikita is going to have to worry about in this fight, but I think he's going to do a, a great job uh defending that and keeping the position here. And I think he has all the tools at that gym 
to work against a guy with a wrestling background. And that's why I'm leaning towards Nikita Mikhailov by unanimous decision victory here. I don't think either of these guys are going to knock each other out. I think this fight could be one of those born fights uh, that because they're going to be on the ground, uh, moving around a lot, that it's going to bore the fans out. But it's going to be a very fun fight to watch to see at how they contrast and how they maneuver against each other. But I'm going to get the lean here to Nikita Mikhailov. It could be a split decision, but I'm going to go with Unanimous decision victory right here in the co-main event. Moving on to the main event of the evening, we got the Women's Flyweight Championship uh, matchup between the champion, Joriana Velasquez, going up against Liz Kalmuch, the number one contender. Joriana is 12-0, 5-0 in the last five fights. Of course, she's fighting out of Brazil. And then you got Liz Gorilla Kalmuch, who comes in at 16-7. <coughs> she's 4-1 in the last five fights out of California, United States. They train out Team Nagara Gym and then Team Hurricane Awesome Gym. The people think that's going to be 80% towards uh, the champ, Velasquez, whereas only 20% are going to lean towards Carmooch. I'm going to lean towards the champ here. I think this is going to be a five round uh, decision victory for her. Uh, I think Liz Carmooch is a very formidable opponent with her. With her height, long length, she has good power. As you saw in the last fight, a lot of people saw her going out there with the and not standing KO kind of with Tanabe. Uh, she's mostly known for the jiu-jitsu and her grappling, but that power is there, and she's been able to knock people out in her UFC and Belter career, whereas Joanna Velasquez is very quick. She has really good cardio. She can go all five rounds. Uh, you saw in the Kira Hertz fight that that was a war there that she needed the cardio and the speed to, to pull out the the small victory there. But she has the the the, the strike in the box in here. Uh, I love her jab. I love the the hook, the overhand shots. She knows how to mix up her striking and movement to come at her opponent. And I think that's what's going to be the difference here. I think it's just going to be volume, volume, volume here. She's going to have to watch out for the grappling of Kormuch. I think Kormuch will try to get the fight to the ground at some point in time. But I think the key with Velasquez is, is to get the striking going, get uh, get her game going, utilize the middle of the octagon, be the one pressure in Kormuch. And as long as she does that, she should win this one by Ines decision victory. I, I think it, it's going to be easier than the fight against Kier Hertz. Kier Hertz is a different type of fighter who possessed harder style to deal with than Kormuch does. Kormuch is a better seasoned fighter that might make this a little difficult. But I think at the end of the day, I got Joriana Velasquez winning four rounds to one by Ines decision victory over Liz Kormuch to defend her uh, MMA flyweight championship in Belter, and she's going to move on to the next challenge in the future. But once again, in the main event, I got Joriana Vasquez by decision. That wrap things up with uh, today's uh, Belter 278 uh, four card breakdown by yours truly, Cage. Before we get going, I just want to get a shout out to our sponsor, uh, High Tide Herbal. If you don't know who High Tide Herbal is, check out the video that I'm about to play for you right now. Offering high quality, sustainable products with all natural lab tested ingredients, it's High Tide Herbal's mission to help others live the longest, healthiest, and most productive lives possible. Their hemp derived CBD products have a wide variety of uses from helping sore muscles to skin hydration and minimizing skin irritation. They generate results based on your specific needs. Elevate your lifestyle with the new wave of wellness. Visit HighTideHerbal.com to learn more. That's High Tide Herbal. All you got to do is go to www.HighTideHerbal.com. Put in the promo code CAGEMYQ10 at checkout to receive 10% off your next purchase. Once again, go to uh, HighTideHerbal.com. Go to checkout, put in the promo code 
Cage My IQ 10 and watch as you see 10% off your next purchase. That'll wrap things up with uh, today's episode. I will be back in the next week to cover Belcher 279. And then after that, I'll be back in a couple weeks to cover Belcher 280, which will be headlined by a heavyweight matchup in Paris, France. But other than that, all I ask for you guys to do is uh, hit the like button down below. Hit us up in the comment section uh, just to let me know what you think of the video. I want to get your guys' feedback, and I want to get your guys' opinions on who you think is going to win on Friday. And then, of course, as always, if you haven't done, uh, done so already, please hit the subscribe button and let everybody know about Cage My IQ. But that will wrap things up. And other than that, I will talk to you guys next time. But thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cage My IQ. See ya.